Okay, uh, so this is the 2015 World Championship of Hearthstone. Last time we did this, there was only two sets in the game. There was the classic set, and there was Curse of Naxxramas. But here's the thing about Curse of Naxxramas. It wasn't an expansion. It was an adventure. An adventure was a much smaller section of cards, even though Naxxramas was very impactful to the game. It wasn't a lot of options. Enter 2015 World Championship. We got Goblins versus Gnomes, Blackrock Mountain, which was another adventure, but also extremely impactful, and the Grand Tournament. I'm not going to tell you what expansion was good and what expansion was bad, but one of the things I just mentioned was one of the worst expansions Hearthstone has ever seen throughout its history. It, okay, it not, better not be the Grand Tournament. I'm not telling you what <laughs> it is. So <laughs> um, I will say that I have done a video on one of these expansions talking about how it almost killed Hearthstone. Your job today, I looked at the top 16 players of the World Championship. You have four categories. Top two, as in the cards were seen in their top two lists. Top 16, the card was played in ladder, like not on the, on the tournament, or it was just, okay. gig, it was just giga bad. <laughs> okay. Grim Patron. Five mana, three, three. After this minion survives damage, summon another Grim Patron. Let me think, let me think. So I remember there's a hero power that damages something. Like you can just one point shoot this and make another. Does that mean it survived damage? As long as it doesn't deal three or more when it's at full health, uh, it will summon another copy. Dude, freaking everything does three damage though, right? How, how hard can that be? Oh my goodness. So last time you showed me a chill wind Yeti. <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, uh? and that turned out to be a finals card. And I'm supposed to tell you whether or not Grim Patron was in these categories. <laughs> the meta call is to like put this in the finals or something. But just looking at this, my my heart says it's bad. Like I, I give this bad and you're going to tell me I'm wrong, but we're going to start somewhere. OK, so I before I even tell you the answer to Grim Patron, do you think Lotheb still saw play in the top two of this uh, world championship? Yes. Yeah, Lotheb that, was top two. He was top two. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, that card is insane. Very good card. I got to really set the stage for this card. This might be the most one of the most iconic cards Hearthstone has ever seen. In fact, people, when they see this card, know what the voice line is. Hey, everyone. Get in here! Uh, it is that iconic. Now, just before the Grand Tournament was released, there was the best deck in the game. You know what that deck was called? Grim Patron Warrior. <laughs> Good God. <laughs> okay. Grim Patron Warrior was so powerful that if you knew how to play it, it could have a winning matchup against every other deck in the field. So Blizzard decided to nerf a very important card from this deck, not Grim Patron. Grim Patron was never nerfed because as you probably could tell, that card's not that spicy. They nerf this card instead. Before this world championship, so I have to give you context here. Whenever you summon a minion with three or less attack, give it charge. So ah. you can see where the combo starts coming together, right? Now on top of that card, because that card's obviously very great, there's this card, which was probably the bigger piece of the puzzle, even though I think Warsong Commander was really, really important. I, these are all important. You don't have to review these cards. I'm just giving you the full context here. So when you watch gameplay this, you understand why it's good. Oh, I love it. Okay. Frothing Berserker is three for a two, four. Whenever a minion takes damage, gain plus one attack. So you would <laughs> okay. play Warsong Commander into a Frothing Berserker so that it would get charged before anything else would happen. And then you would do stuff with Grim Patron to summon a bunch of them, keep on trading into your opponent's minions. Even if they had no minions on board, you could one shot your opponent. So this deck was very good. Like it was, if you, if I think about it, like in its prime, it might be the best deck of all time at Hearthstone. It was very good. Um, wow. Warsong Commander got nerfed to arguably the funniest change ever. It's still memed onto this day. The text they changed it to was your charge minions have plus one attack. The card was literally shot in the head. Like they 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 didn't want to deal with this card anymore. They completely cut out that ability. They cut they... it out. But you want to hear something insane? <laughs> okay. This deck was still played in the top two of the world championship and it won. The guy who won played this deck without Warsong Commander in it and won. It, of this? tournament of this tournament after this the nerf. tournament after the nerf okay. <laughs> what <laughs> it feels like that's the the missing piece like 
Yeah, so huh? I completely forgot about this because I was like, oh, the deck needed Warsong Commander to get played. But here's the thing. Hearthstone at this time, there wasn't as much removal as you're probably thinking. So even if you didn't have the Warsong Commander, you could still build a big, big enough board where you could trade to your opponent's minions and still kill them. And then you win the game through tempo, right? It wasn't the same like exact archetype because you couldn't play for that combo anymore, but you could still win a game through just through board control. And yeah, the winner of the tournament a grim patron warrior without warsong commander and won it unstable ghoul this is two mana for a one three taunt death rattle deal one damage to all minions <gasps> if they have a grim patron and they like run into that like they get two grim patrons yes <laughs> I don't know whether that makes this card amazing or terrible because you can't run it if your opponent's running the patron, <laughs> but you kind of want to run it with your patron, right? Right. Ooh, one damage to all minions. I mean, this seems I'm going to I don't want to forget the context of the meta, but if you're not running against Grim Patron, this still seems like a pretty good card in a defensive deck. This is a this got to be a frustrating card to get around. So I think this is a good card. I, I would say this is a top two card. I feel like there's decks for this. This if, if you're trying to stall the game, this seems great. And it seems great with the patron. Yeah. OK, so great analysis right there. Um, This card was played in the same deck as Grim Patron for the one that they played. It was a one of uh, it wasn't a two of. But it, you're right. It's really good against early. Uh, oh, my God. Early decks. But it's also really good against or with your Grim Patron, I should say. Uh, the thing is, is that You'll start to notice the pieces that really started to make Grim Patron very powerful because you could set up dealing one damage on board before you even played your Grim Patron. Oh, Iron Beak Owl. Aha. The joke's on you. I watched <laughs> the 2014 tournament after we did the video. Right? <laughs> this card was in freaking everything in 2014. So let me explain something real fast to you. You're right. Okay. It was in everything in 2014, but... You're forgetting <gasps> two expansions in an adventure. Did an Iron Beak Owl really make the cut for a lot of these decks? Remember, Hearthstone's only 30 card decks at this point. How do you do better than the Owl? Look at him. <laughs> Look at this staple of competitive Hearthstone. How is this card not the thumbnail? Why is this not the most appreciated card in the game? He, Why are we making he a went, big he had deal? His time. He had his time. He wasn't Grim Patriot <laughs> level, but he had his time for sure. I, somebody in the top 16 played this owl. I'm going top 16 cards. Somebody, somebody held on. Somebody held on to the past. <laughs> For the, okay, so it's interesting. You would think that at this point in Hearthstone's lifespan, they would print a better silence card. There wasn't a better silence card than this. This was the guy. And he was played in top 16. Iron Beak Owl was nerfed. How do you think they nerfed it? How did they nerf it? Oh, God. <laughs> Battle cry, maybe it's like silence a minion that was like three or less. Maybe they put like a ceiling on the silence effect. So that would probably may have been more elegant, but they made it to three mana. And oh, make yeah, a three cringe. minute, a three minute two one was kind of hard to really want to put into your deck at that point. Um, I forgot that's how they yeah. move cards in Hearthstone back then. Just throw a mana on it. It's yeah, fine. <laughs> unstable portal. Two mana, add a random minion to your hand. It costs three less. I know that minions are not spells. I want right. that to be clear <laughs> to everyone. <laughs> I mean, this card looks good. But it is random. That doesn't mean from your deck. That means of all time, right? Any minion that's in the standard pool, you can get. See, that that is the stuff right there. That, that makes me, I don't know. I don't know about that. There is some real crappy stuff you can get, but you could get an owl. That could happen. You could get an owl. Uh, the, the fact that costs three less means that you're getting an insane rate though on almost anything. Like the worst case scenario is you get like a one mana minion and it's zero. So you spent two mana on a bad one mana minion. I, this is a tough one to figure out because it's so unreliable, but the reduction can be so good. I will say this card. Did somebody play this in top 16? No, I'm going to say it was played, but not in the tournament. Okay. This card is really interesting because at first glance, you would think to yourself that it's not very good because you're right. The average card you're going to get is probably not worth like putting this card into your deck. You'd rather have another one, but it was surprisingly really good because sometimes you're right. You do high roll, but there was a tempo mage deck, which was very good. And I hate to say this to you. It was played in the top two. The guy, Ooh, the guy ended I, up losing. Mm, 
Like the, mm. that that was the second that was the second highest uh, runner. Obviously, that was the runner up. But Tempo Mage was very good. Unstable Portal was good enough that it would see play because it did provide you enough tempo majority of the time. Hearthstone players like this is another thing I have to adapt to. Hearthstone players are going to roll their eyes at this, but it's true. You guys don't have as many bad cards as Magic. Like Magic just has a deeper well of absolute shit. Sorry, hold on. I almost, I want you to know I almost burst out laughing because I want to remind you. I want to remind you one of these sets was really bad. And that's it. Yeah. Yeah, I know. But I, I'm telling you, every magic set, like if this card existed in magic, I hope they make this for magic. If this existed in magic, every set has like 270 some cards, and like 200 of them are absolute trash for playing draft, for playing limited. Antique Hellbot, five mana. <laughs> I'm gonna remind you too. Hearthstone's uh, <laughs> Hearthstone's max health is thirty, just for the record. Oh, I'm sorry. Antique heal yeah. bot. Hell bot. I was like, what? <laughs> five mana, three three mech battle cry. Restore eight health to your hero. Max health is thirty. Okay. Um. Oh God. Was there good healing stuff? It is an improvement over eight mana. Draw three heal. Oh, eight. lay on hands. I think. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. I think that was a, a moon shot I got right. Um, hmm. At this point, are the mechs doing much? Mm, on like, there were good mechs, is what I'll say. If that's what you're asking, yeah, like there were good. And mechs. they had synergies with each other. Yes, kinda, kind of. Yeah, you okay. could, you could like. One of the expansions, goblins versus gnomes, is literally like mechs versus gnomes. Uh, uh, okay, so you could definitely, yeah, you could definitely. There were good mechs back. Top in the day. two, top two card. He gave it away. He gave it away. It's 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 a synergistic machine. It's unbeatable. <laughs> what are you supposed to do when there's eight health gained? There's some card that says every time you gain a health, do one damage okay, to your okay, hold opponent's on, hold on. board. It Top did, two. In Disneyland, sure. I'm going to warn you right now. This card was played in a vacuum if it was played. Like, this was not a synergy card whatsoever. You're yep, playing this? Two. Okay, you're... <laughs> You're not taking me off it. Okay, this was a top two card. Uh, yeah, may, not because of any synergy, and I genuinely mean that. Like, you could cut the mech tag from this, and this card was gonna see play. This card was played because you're right. Healing back in the day was ass, and they gave a neutral healing card to every class. So if you wanted to play a five minute three three, which of course at the cost of tempo gained you eight life, and that was really good apparently. So both the players in the top two ran it. Wow. Uh, I think it was one copy for each of them. Very, very nice. I, I do get this impression that healing is better in Hearthstone because the opponents can just go face. Again, you can't like interact, right? Yeah. So it, you can play a taunt, but if they owl it, then they just go face anyway. So healing's a little safer than taunt against some things is, is the impression I got. Violet Teacher is a four mana three five. Whenever you cast a spell, summon a one one Violet Apprentice. The Violet Apprentice is just a one mana one one token. There's nothing on okay. it. Okay, nothing else. Okay. This card was in like one of the decks in 2014 and it didn't do much, I think, in, in the games I watched. Uh, and they the, the casters did kind of talk about it like it wasn't in a ton of decks, but maybe I'm, maybe I'm misremembering. In 2014, it was in a rogue deck, and they cast a whole bunch of spells and made a nice board, but they're just one ones. And in the Grim Patron meta, where you just mow down the one ones and replace them with a board of three threes, I don't know if you want this anymore. Just like 2014, I'll give it a top 16 that somebody couldn't let go. There's always a boomer. There's always somebody who slides in there on their reputation, playing some, you know, they, they're, they're not an innovator. They just cling to the past. There's always somebody sliding in there. Can't wait for you to tell me who it is. <laughs> uh, so this card is very interesting because back. So in classic, this card was ran in a deck called Miracle Rogue, which was pretty much what you described. You would play a bunch of spells, and this is one way that you could win the game because at least you'd have some kind of mid-range uh, aspect to it, like a combo deck is what I'm going to describe it as. This time, there was a card that made this a lot stronger, and this Ooh. this is the card. Tinker's Sharpshored Oil. Let me try that again. Tinker's Sharpshored <laughs> Oil. <laughs> That's the weirdest thing to say. Four mana, give your weapon plus three attack. Combo, give a random friendly minion plus three attack. So huh? 
This card was good because what Violet Teacher says whenever you cast the spell, which means when you cast the spell, this summons the one one and then the spell would like uh, resolve, which means you could summon a one one with plus three extra attack, which was really, really powerful back in the day because it made an additional threat. There's a card called Preparation which is a card that I'm also missing here. Preparation was zero mana, reduced like spell by three mana. So this was prep, tinkers, uh, and Violet Teacher summons two one ones, and one of them also gets the plus three attack. That was actually a really, really good uh, mid game play. And it was enough for both the players in the top two to run it. Wow, this is a double top two card. Ooh, double top two card. One of them, the, the guy- Violet Teacher. The guy who won ran two, the guy who didn't run a uh, one ran one. Zombie Chow? Yep. <laughs> Zombie Chow is a one mana two three with death rattle restore five health to the enemy hero. The enemy hero. <laughs> hmm. 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 Now Here see, I would have said this was trash. Okay. <laughs> but 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 not every deck is aggro. Max health is 30. So if they're at 30 when this dies, they don't get any health, right? And so you can just use this to trade with their early minion. This is this is a, like a control card if you want a one drop in a control. Yeah, yeah, you're you're, you're just trying to take out their early whatever. Yeah. Is this a top two card? I can't this is a top two card. This is a top two card. Top two card, final answer? Yeah. Okay, so you're actually like kind of on the right path there. This card was used to establish board presence right from the beginning of the game. Because obviously a one mana two three is a pretty great stat line. That not only trades for another one drop majority of the time, but it probably trades up into a two drop. Mid range and control decks love this card. Unfortunately, yeah. it wasn't played in the top two. It was played in the top 16 though. Close. Close. All right, all right, I overshot, but I overshot. Good, good thought process right there. Very good thought process. Astral Communion is four mana, gain 10 mana crystals, discard your hand. The fuck? Oh, <laughs> You, as you probably are aware, what max mana crystals in this game is 10. So yes. when you play this card, you legitimately get 10 mana crystals, which also means you can hear a power the same turn. Um, uh huh. But yeah, at the cost of discarding your entire hand. Wow, you can hero power. Wait, I, listen, at <laughs> turn four, 10 mana? God damn. No hand. You're just top decking. You're just top decking. Now, so they, you wait, watched. Wait, so they can do this on like turn like two. They can technically do it on turn one if their hands is good enough. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Now I do oh, want to remind sure. you. I do want to mm. remind you because you saw the World Championship for 2014. Druid mm -hmm. in Classic had probably top three draw somewhere around there in the deck. Also on top of minions as well. Now there was ways for Druid to draw a bunch of cards at once. Yeah, I I, I remember a few of the expensive ones. Um, God. You can only have one of these though, right? You have two. This is two. an epic. Yeah. Okay. Not unrealistic to have on curve. Oh, is this a scam? Discard your hand, bro. Discard yeah, your think hand. Of, think about it, right? You're right. You I, go, oh, in, oh, you go I'm innervate, thinking. you go innervate, coin, astral communion. You don't care about the other two cards in your hand. And then you're top decking literally on turn one at 10 mana. God, this feels like a scam, but it's also absurd. Like, it's also absurdly potentially powerful. This is like high ceiling, low floor. And then there's also the problem of if you build a deck around this with a really higher than normal curve, like what if you just draw the high curve? So I'm picturing like you get your opening hand, right? And it's got like three, seven drops in it. And you're say, okay, I mull those away. I'm trying to hit Astro Communion. You hit an Innervate, you hit an Astro Communion, you play that and you draw seven drops the rest of the game. You are a baller. That is like an all or nothing kind of strategy that probably pays off a good amount of time. The question is, I don't know the math. This is, this is, <laughs> this is a, this is some Firebat shit. Firebat did the math, has a spreadsheet and knows that like 40% of the time your Astral Communion deck pops hard. So it's not good or 60% of the time it pops hard. So it's busted. Um, God, this feels like a bait. It feels like you put this in here as a bait. It's such a good Timmy card. And these are not my type of cards. I'm going to say ladder played and that the stats didn't back it up. That's why I'm going with. Okay, so <laughs> the math, the dream of this card is that yeah, you play this on hopefully earlier than turn four. Uh, there is the possibilities with this card were endless, but it was just too bad. Uh, yes. Okay. 
which means it wasn't Sorry, playing. I was getting scared. No, you're fine. You're fine. I have to set you up for that. Now, this one is going to come down to really, I guess, personal experience. I wouldn't really say this card was good to begin with, but there's probably a couple people who had really high success with this because they're just the best gamers ever. This card was bad. All right, next. Isn't this exciting? Uh, kind of. That one gave my heart little palpitations. <laughs> <laughs> Malganus? Malganus? Mal Malganus. 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 Like a Raren? Like a Raren. <laughs> and not <Sure>. a Raren. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Nine mana, nine, seven demon. Your hero is immune. Your other demons have plus two, plus two. What's immune? So immune is there's nothing that can deal damage to your hero. It can't be targeted. This card is on the board and it's not silenced. They have to kill this card first. Basically is what it means. Mm, super taunt. Ba actually, just super taunt is a great way of saying it. Okay. I don't know what the payoff for other demons is. I'm remembering some of the other demons. From the last tournament, this definitely doesn't feel like it fits in Zoo Warlock at all. I love a card that just comes down and gives you a turn. Now, the owl kind of has its way with this. Yep. The owl <laughs> So the, 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 the owl is the killer, man. The owl is the nuts. Um, <laughs> I, I have trouble figuring... Like, I really can't think of... I'm going to feel stupid, but I can't think of the demons that we're giving plus two, plus two, two that make this good as a kind of kindred leader to run with other demons it's really that first line is locking me in on your hero is immune because mm, i i feel like though i feel like the other big cards the eight and nine mana cards i feel like they do more to the board than this does and it's kind of like okay you play this big thing either they remove it they silence it or they attack it either way it's just kind of a I, I feel like you want your big play to be more resilient than this. Let's let's say cheeky one of in top 16. Malganus is a card that was mainly played because you could cheat it out. Now, this is a card I didn't show you last time with a card called Void Caller. Void Caller was released in Curse of Nax Ramus, but didn't really have the payoff until later. This is Void Caller, by the way, if you want to read it. This was a very good, like in early days of Hearthstone, this is a very good card. They just needed the payoff. Malganus was one of those payoffs. Now, not, not, not to be confused, it was still good to play on turn nine. Like, it, it's like you said, it was just basically like a free remove or free turn, top 16. And he was played in every single Warlock deck as far as I am concerned. It he, is a Zoo Warlock card because they got a cheaty way to get it They got a cheat. Now, I was hoping you'd be like, there's no way this card's playable, even with all of that shit, because it's nine mana to like what? Play a 9-7 body, but yeah, you could cheat it out. Dude, 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 dude. So in Magic right now, there is something that's happening in a format called Pioneer. It's like a powered format. It's it's older than standard, so it's okay. a very strong format. And there's this card that they printed called Vein Ripper, which is like six mana for a 6-5 flyer with some cool text. But like in standard, people don't really even play it because it's just not on rate. But it happens to be a vampire. And in an older format, there's this three mana card that just cheats out a vampire. And oh, when you so have it on turn three, it's broken. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah it's, I got you. It's, so it's, same kind of thing. Yeah, it's crazy how good mana cheating is across every single game. Just just picking a minion and not playing it for its cost is pretty broken. Mind control tech. Three mana, three, three, battle cry. If your opponent has four or more minions, take control of one at random. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Ah. I mean, I'm thinking about the boards of minions I've seen, and I, my God, there's a lot of just little dorks lying around. I, I watched the Sludge Belcher meta, okay? The, like, right. It's just little little taunters all over the place, um, little totems and stuff. I, it was weird. There's so much little crap you would, I wouldn't want to gain control of. But three mana, three, three, you wouldn't play it on its own, but the rate isn't terrible. The fact that it comes with an opponent's thing is pretty good. I'm guessing that this card was played on ladder by players who didn't understand how the whole cycle works. And then everybody determined it was bad. And then somebody showed up with it at the tournament and everybody's like, why are they playing with that card? It's bad. But then it yoinks something and they're like, oh my God, it's good. And then they all played it and then it sucked. And they're like, God, that was a terrible card to play because it's just all about the mind games. This card is 100% meta. So I'm going to say, God, 
to, oh my gosh, maybe it's in top two. Maybe that's how they got to top two. Is this a top two card? This card is a top two card. Oh my God. That was crazy. Okay. But I'm my, right. Mind control tech was in classic. I didn't show you it last time. And the thing about mind control tech is you're entirely right. This is a card that if you don't play around, it punishes you greatly. In fact, I hated this fucking card because even if you do kind of play around it, at some point in time, there's going to be game states where you couldn't. And then it might steal your best minion and the game might be decided on that coin flip. Luckily, this card was not played in the top two, but hmm. one person brought it for the top 16. One person. I almost said that. I, I like full cycled myself. <laughs> I, now, it's been so long that I wasn't sure if the deck lists were open, but I'm pretty confident they were. Like, I think you knew what you were getting into. So there was context of like, yeah, there is a mind control tech in that opponent's deck. But if you think about it even bigger, if you know the mind control is in your opponent's deck, you have to play around it. You have to because you might lose the game and you don't want to lose the world championship because of a mind control deck. Oh, my goodness. The, the, this art is cool. This dude, this dude the is game yeah. on. Oh, my uh, God. Reminder, legendary, legendary card. One of Th that's the gold, the goldie symbol. Yes. Yep. OK. The Mist Caller, six mana, four, four, battle cry. Give all minions in your hand and deck, plus one, plus one. I, gosh, it, you're doing the thing again where you're giving the magic player these uh, hand buff and deck buffs that we don't know how to evaluate very well because we've only had alchemy and alchemy is a bit of a train wreck. <laughs> Wait, do they not have hand buffs in like standard? Ever? The, like, how would you track it on oh, paper? Oh, you're so right. Okay, yeah, fair mm. enough, fair enough. So yeah, this is kind of, it's pretty common I can tell in Hearthstone and it's pretty new to us. Six mana for a four four just is not very big. Now the things that come out after that, it's like nice to have a buff, but does it matter that much? Also for each individual card, like it helps if you are playing like two or three minions at a time, that's how like you get paid for this, but then your opponent's casting like seven or eight drops it seems like their stats are going to be a lot better yeah i uh uh i think that just on its own it's not enough rate i just mm, yeah i'm i'm gonna say not played i'm gonna i'm gonna say not played okay here's the thing about the mist color when the grand tournament was showcased and they're doing their card reveals and people are really excited for this expansion this is a card that came up and so many people thought it was going to be broken because hearthstone and its current spot wasn't super fast paced. There was a lot of mid range deck. It didn't really seem like a six mana four four was the worst thing in the world for such a potential big payoff. You're right. This card was tried very quickly after realized why am I playing this shit when I can play something infinitely better? Did not really see any play. But for this tournament, or this the grand tournament, I should say, probably one of the most hyped cards from the set by far. This was their cover art. They're like, we did it, guys. He was, I don't know if he was the cover art, but when it was revealed, people were like, oh my god, what the hell? How could they print this? It's gonna terrorize the metagame. Varian Rin. 10 mana, 7-7, seven, seven, battle cry, draw three. Put any minions you drew directly into the battlefield. <laughs> into the battlefield, into. I love it. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> the wording there is actually really funny in hindsight. But yeah, this is for Warrior. Remember what I said about Warrior. It's the only class in the game that can like overheal and it's removal. Oh. Uh, I, I, still, I don't know if that changes my mind. I want this with the card that gives me 10 mana crystals. Put it in Druid. It'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a fine Druid card right here. <laughs> oh, man. Warrior. I don't think the Warrior like cheats on mana at all. So I'm trying to think if is... they had anything. I don't think they had anything to cheat mana in the early days of Hearthstone. I mean, there's Control Warrior. There are Warrior decks that play a longer game. The thing I've realized about playing a longer game is like like people were actually really afraid of going to fatigue like people were dying of fatigue fatigue like, was a mm. win condition for sure like especially in the early days of hearthstone it was a really big win condition um cheeky one of wait is that your final answer <laughs> yeah top top 16 cheeky one of one Case. person played one of these in the top 16. so very Rin was another card that was extremely extremely overhyped when it was in the grand tournament now was it played on ladder yeah people did play it on ladder and i think later on it did see a little bit more play but during this tournament not a single person brought it in the top 16 ah, at least okay, okay um there was just way better stuff for you to be doing with warrior warrior is the control deck by the way other than patron uh if you're playing 
control warrior. I haven't shown you a card. I'll just a card true heart because I did not want to go through the whole process, but there's a card that replaces your current hero power with a better one. So rather than spending two mana to gain two armor, you spend two mana to gain four armor. And that was a really big deal because you could play for fatigue. So why would I play very rated by deck if I'm going to play for fatigue in the late game? No point. Like I, you mentioned earlier. I almost had that. I almost had that. Too. You almost had it. That's, like, how dare we draw three cards <laughs> after we have 10 mana? We'll lose the game. Now, <laughs> I think maybe in hindsight, like if we if we did the, the new tournament with the grand tournament metagame, like whatever this world championship metagame is, people might run this card a little bit more because I don't think we would really play for fatigue as much. But the, the control warrior variant was much about gaining armor, stopping your opponent from winning the game, and then just fatigue them. Hungry dragon. <laughs> <laughs> four mana, five, six battle cry. Summon a random one cost minion for your opponent. So if you can't tell, a four mana, five, six is rather large. Yeah. Okay. Okay. A random one cost minion. I mean, they've got one mana, two threes out here. <laughs> the zombie chows. Yeah, oh. yeah. Yeah, you summon that thing and then you hit it and you gain five. <laughs> it's a good deal. <laughs> <laughs> Easy. <laughs> um, man, I hate I hate these like good stats, but downside. What I remember is when they have charge, it's very good. So there's a card that's throwing out charge like it's a gift. Like everybody gets a charge. <laughs> If so, my my choices are really either it wasn't in the tournament or finals. I'll go finals. This card was bad. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was bad. So the thing is, is like, yeah, four and five, six is definitely good. But the one cost mini on an average is going to be not worth the pay or not worth the stats on a four minute five, six, even if it's a dragon, because I haven't showed you a lot of the one drops in this game, but one drops were pretty popping. Like there's some pretty great ones. So hunger dragon wasn't like ever really that good, even with the dragon synergy. No one brought it was in the tournament. I'm sure I saw like very fringe play on ladder. Wasn't really good enough, though. People cut it pretty fast. Just a big boy. Rend Blackhand is a seven mana eight four battle cry. If you're holding a dragon, destroy a legendary minion. If you're holding a dragon, destroy a legendary minion. Hmm. Like in the 2014, it was really interesting how there were cards like uh, Black Knight and Harrison Jones that were just like pick off this random other thing that they might have, but enough people always had one that they were good. Yeah. And this feels like that. But there is that nasty clause of you have to hold a dragon to get the thing. And if you don't, it's a seven mana eight four. So how many dragons can you be holding for this to be good? But compare this to the owl, though, man. Compare this to the owl. The owl like, is nuts. <laughs> the, owl, the owl is just the nuts. He yeah, was there to three mana, dude. Leave him alone. We, we can't all be the owl. See, here's the thing. You saying this tells me we haven't seen that many dragons so either there's a deck that you're kind of keeping under the radar that made top two, but we haven't talked about anything like a dragon deck in top two. So I, I would say this is a top 16 card based on the fact that holding the dragon isn't an absurd cost. And if that like, so that's what I'm going with. But if you tell me this card was bad after that, it's on okay. you. It's totally what? on you. <laughs> Black Rock Mountain had a lot of really good dragons in it like full transparency. There's a lot of cards that said, if you're holding a dragon, there's one that's like a five minute five, four. If you're holding a dragon, deal three damage to a minion. Very, very good card. But Ren Blackhand doesn't even fucking matter if you're holding a dragon. That's, a, that's not the point that matters. This is such a specific card, such a specific card that even if you do hit a legendary minion, it is still not worth running into your deck. This card was huh. miserably bad. One of the worst cards ever printed. Now, are there situations where you're absolutely gonna hit the nuts? Of course, that's what that's what card games are. There's so much variance, but consistently speaking, this card's bad. You never wanna play a seven minute eight four. It dies to like a three drop. So you have to hit a pretty good minion. Also, the really important thing about legendaries is that unless it's something like Ysera, it's already done its job when you played it. Dr. Boom, seven mana, seven, seven battle cry, summon two one one boom bots. Warning bots may explode. But okay, boom nice bot. Boot. One mana, one one mech, death rattle, deal one to four damage to a random enemy. Okay, seven mana, seven seven, two one ones that when they die, deal one to four damage to a random enemy. One to four. Huh. I mean, okay, well, on its own, it's seven seven in stats. You add the bots to it, it's nine, nine in stats. And then there's a random number between two and eight of how much damage 
somehow gets distributed amongst enemies. It can go face, right? It can go face, yeah. It can go face. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, the random. Oh, curse you, random. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's cool. It's a lot of stats. What, what class is this? Neutral. I don't know, man. This card seems really good. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure. There, there's like a... Hmm, I'm not sure which decks particularly, but it feels like it's actually good in like any kind of a mid-range and late game thing. I bet it could be run in a lot of spots. Like, I, I don't see a lot of sevens I'd rather run, except really specific ones. It ain't We're no run black deck hand. Shut up. <laughs> 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 I knew it before you said it. Uh, top two card. Okay. Dr. Boom was released in Goblins vs. Snow. During his time, he was in the standard format. And I think this is just objectively speaking. He is the most played card during that time. It is not even close. There's cards like Piloted Shredder that were played, but Piloted Shredder was like more of an aggro-ish card, mid-range card. Dr. Boom, you could slot into like 99% of your decks. Dr. Boom had the benefit of there was no other seven drop in the game that you wanted to play. But often just playing this card was enough to fight for board to like swing the game. It was enough to put the pressure on even more in your opponents. It was played in almost every single deck from the top 16 and it was played in the top two. If you ask wow. people what the best card that they played with during their era of like the early days of Hearthstone, a lot of people would say this card just for how impactful it is. Master Jouster is a six mana five, six battle cry reveal a minion in each deck. If it, if yours costs more gain taunt and divine shield. Okay, so this is one of the mechanics that they introduced during the grand tournament, which is a joust, which is kind of cool. So what would happen is you would play this card, you would reveal a minion from your deck and you would reveal a minion from your opponent's deck at the same time. And then it would check to see if the mana cost of your minion was higher. That's a big deal because if they count as the same, if they're the same cost, you do not get the benefit of this card. Ooh. But there is the benefit of revealing what minion is in your opponent's deck at the same time. But they also get that information, so it just kind of cuts each other out. See, the thing about games is you got to cheat at the game to win <laughs> for it to be good. Yeah. Like, that's all we're doing. That's all we're doing in Hearthstone, in Magic, in I, I don't know what a <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh does, but I guarantee it's all like, hey, here's a rule set and some sweet ways that these cards interact. And us nerds are like, all right, how do we cheat? Yep. Like, how do we cheat in, in, in within the confines of the game? How do we mana cheat? How do we stats cheat? How do we deck building cheat? This is a deck building cheat card. So you want to play this in your deck that doesn't have anything lower than the jouster. And the only other things it runs are like super expensive so that the odds of you winning are super high. All right. Now, assuming that winning the joust, we have built our whole deck around winning the joust. And then we have a taunt and divine shielded five, six. That's annoying. They have to like <laughs> break the shield, you know, yep. they, they got to run something into that shield and then they've got to get through that taunt. But you know who doesn't give a fuck? Owl. <laughs> so true. Actually so true. So you could build your whole deck around this and they're like, owl, get yep. out. And you said this is from the grand tournament. And this is I, dude, the joust mechanic, like the upside has to be so big. I, I think that just cool abilities on your minion in a meta where minions can be removed or owled. I don't think that's good enough to just not play any cheap minions. I mean, maybe, maybe there's enough other things to do but it feels like the game is so minion focused i'm gonna say this card is bad yeah this card was horrific bro it was really bad you're right like the joust mechanic is so cool in flavor for an expansion called the grand tournament but it just like it, i guess they wanted to call it like a deck building exercise so uh -huh. it never really saw a play i have to tell you a story though i have to tell you a story because of the joust mechanic, because of how it interacted with like animations and how animations work on your opponent's turn, because they will bleed over to your opponent's turn uh, back in the day, people would use the joust mechanic with Nas Dormu, the card that made your turn only 15 seconds to skip their turn because you could like cheese it. So that was like the real, that was the real win condition for jousting. <laughs> oh, that's cheating on a whole yeah. different level. Yeah. 
So they passed that shit okay. pretty fast. But yeah, that was... Oh um, my God. Nas Dormo is such a funny card. Yeah, that, but the Jess mechanic is like, it never paid off. You're right, because you have to build it in such a way where you don't want low cost minions. But like, how do you fight for the board if you don't run like minions, especially like as a deck that's not warrior? So it just felt weird. This one was probably one of the cooler ones. Like it had a really good upside if you won. But also you're right. The owl just said, LOL. Like, what are you doing? So it just, it never saw play. Uh, as you could probably tell, remember at the start of this, I said to you, one of these expansions was really bad. Do you know what expansion that was after all of this? Yeah. Do you, do you remember when I said it would be really cringe if it was the yeah. one called the yeah. grand tournament? <laughs> yeah. So the, I made a video on this because it was really interesting. If you go look at the Google trends for the grand tournament, it was the most hyped Hearthstone expansion of all time, right? Really cool theme. All of these really, uh, really iconic cards coming from all over Azeroth to be a part of this grand tournament. Interesting concept of cards. The cards that they showcased was really, really cool. People pre-ordered it. It was probably the most pre-ordered Hearthstone expansion of all time. And it ended up being one of the worst of all time. Also, Secret Paladin was the most popular deck and the cadence of balance changes they would make back in the day was very limited. So that deck ran the fucking show for basically the entire expansion. Uh, people were annoyed. So uh. that expansion had a huge impact on Hearthstone's future. Huge, huge, huge impact. It's, it's crazy looking at the Google Trends. But I have one more card to show you. Nexus Champion Sarad. Five mana, four or five. Inspire. Add a random spell to your hand. So inspire was the keyword that they introduced from the grand tournament. In you want to take a guess what it is? Oh God. <laughs> uh, honestly, this is one of the first where just the way this card is laid out. Like, I don't feel like there's any hint. So like, I, I really don't know. Inspire is you have to use your hero power to get the effect. So you spend two mana, use your hero power while this is on the board and you get that effect. You spend one more mana than a chill wind Yeti. Yep. You get a four or five. And if on the next turn you pigeonhole yourself into a hero power and then maybe a four more mana crystals worth of stuff, that's like such a bad curve. I mean, it's not, I, I, okay, it's not terrible, but I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that the opponent can do better. Um, a random spell to your hand, as we've discussed, can be anything. It's a lot of crap out there doesn't mean it's going to work with your strategy and then this just needs to be on the board while you you know punch your hero power to get some random dopamine this card is bad right this card has to be bad oh let me think let me think let me think <laughs> <sighs> i mean i've seen the hero powers there are there's a number of hero powers you don't even want to activate every turn this is bad this is bad this is bad this card okay. was not played this card, <laughs> this card is card bad this card is this card is fun because this is out of all of the cards in the grand tournament. I've showed you actually quite a bit from the grand tournament. I don't know if you've realized the, the icon in the back kind of gives you a concept if I didn't say it out loud. Um, but like Ashley Comedians from the grand tournament, right? Mm -hmm. And so is hold on the Miss Callers from the grand tournament. Varian Rins from the grand tournament, right? There's so many cards here that like they look really cool, but they just never saw play. Nexus Champion Sarad was one of the few that were actually not that bad because this card was made for a deck where you needed to get more value and you were willing to take the tempo or the loss of tempo, I should say, for a card effect like this. And I hate to say this to you. This card was played in the top two. <laughs> really? <laughs> like a random spell? It was a <laughs> We got to so deal with it. God knows what will happen <laughs> if they spend two man on their hero hey. power to get a random spell. The concept was. It was played in Tempo Mage. So Freeze Mage didn't want this card because Freeze Mage had a burn condition and as long as it wasn't against Warrior, you were fine. Tempo Mage wanted this card. Well, at least it, some versions of it wanted it because you would play your early game minions and then you would use your burn, etc. cetera. You, you play for Tempo and then all of a sudden like, oh, I don't have a lot of cards in my hand or whatever, right? Next to Champions Rod comes down and you're like, okay, well, at least I can get something back while still applying some kind of threat. And that's what he was utilized for. So even if he got one spell from you, your opponent would be like, okay, I can't leave this alive. So now I have to respond to it. And that was enough for it to be played. Was it a good card to play in the top two? Uh, you could debate about that. I uh, listen, I'm not, I'm not the player who was in top two. I would have maybe personally gone with a slightly different strategy, but it was played. Wow. I, I, there's no way this card would get played today, right? Like they, you get laughed out of the building. The it's like a three mana card today. So <laughs> I 100% agree with you. It would not be five mana, four, four, 
five mana four five today. But there is a conversation to be had that if when Demon Hunter was released, Demon Hunter is the only class in this game that has a one mana hero power. Uh, so if Demon Hunter was around during Grand Tournament, how much better would some of these cards be? Because I didn't show you any other Inspire card besides Nexus Champions throughout for good reason, because most of them were ass. Like you, you didn't want to spend two mana for an Inspire. In fact, it's funny how every Inspire card they released for that set was like, okay, but I have to add two mana to it because if I'm not going to play a five and a four or five. So like I, I can just play a fucking Yeti, right? Yeah. So you, you need to, you have to think of next to champion Strahd as like a seven mana, four or five, deal one damage with mage and get a random spell, which is really, really bad. Inspire was such a <laughs> weird mechanic. And they, I think they truly thought that like that mechanic was going to be so much better because like you didn't mind using your hero power nearly as much like Warlock likes using its hero power. But why would I want to play for value when I could just kill my opponent? You know, like what, what's the point? Anyways, that's the I, I can't believe it. I still can't believe it. That is the 2015 championship uh, world championship. There are cards I didn't show you. One of the most iconic ones you'll see during the time is Emperor Thorson, who is a six man of five, six man of four, four reduce the cost of every card in your hand by one. I didn't show you that card because it was obvious how good that card was going to be for you. Um, that card's nuts. It made freeze mage so much better. So you'll see freeze mage quite a bit during this tournament. Um, but yeah, that's that's basically it. That's um, that's 2015 World Championship. Really, really fun. I, I can't wait. I can't wait. Hopefully I'll get so, to tell you gush all about it next I'm time. Gonna, I'm going to hype you up as well. OK, I'm going to hype you. OK, up this year was cool. I think next year and the year after that were infinitely better. And I can't wait to show you the year of Ungoro, Frozen Throne, and Kobolds and Catacombs. That year is fucking crazy.